Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Ellen Barrett, and we have a great show for you today. And we are starting off with our news partner, Phil Anderson for U.S. Senate. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Ellen. And today we're hitting another hard-hitting topic, so let's just dive right into it today. We've got sure. a lot to cover. What is your position on freedom of religion? Well, freedom of religion is one of the basic guarantees in the Constitution, and there's a very good reason for that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the founders of our country and the colonists were escaping religious persecution, and not only persecution, but a required state religion in, uh, in England. So when they came here, they wanted to make sure that people had the right to to exercise their conscience in the mm -hmm. political sphere. So that's why they included it in there, and I, of course, agree with that 100%. Now, do your personal religious views kind of impact your political views? They, they do. Um, I normally keep them somewhat private, but I think sure. people that have investigated my background know that I'm Eastern Orthodox and know my positions on things, but mm -hmm. that's not something that I'm imposing on anyone else or trying to introduce into my politics. My politics and my positions stem from an opinion of uh, and a, and a long-standing tradition of understanding how human beings best interact with each other uh, socially and politically. Sure. Um, that's somewhat informed by my personal uh, religion, uh, religious uh, ideas, but that's not something that comes through and like I'm trying to impose that on other people right. through the political process. How do you prevent religion from entering politics in general? Well, we do that by not allowing religion in the government itself. Okay. And I think that brings up an interesting point about the difference between public and private space. Mm -hmm. So one of the issues that's come up in the campaign, uh, specifically in the Gary Johnson campaign, is should business owners be required to you know, sell their services or their goods or whatever regardless of their opinions of the person? And I, I don't think so. I think that somebody has the right, if they own a business, to do business with whoever they choose, that their business is their private property, and that basically the market will sort out the bigots. So if somebody mm -hmm. wants to not sell to somebody because of their sexual orientation, their race, their religion, whatever, that people of good conscience will choose against that. And it's important that um, we have that ability to choose that. Not everyone's forced to conform to a, to a public view that's uh, politically correct uh, because that infringes on their liberty and their personal property, but also tends to hide things that we want to come to the surface. Sure. Now, why is it so important that religion and politics are separate? Well, because politics is a realm where people are, it's, it's shared space. Yeah. And, and, and religion is very, very personal. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about things that are good for everybody, the basic things of human existence, uh, the, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, these are things that aren't religiously specific in mm -hmm. terms of how government interacts with people. It really is just a matter of knowing what the goal is, but not the reason that any particular person or candidate or party is trying to get to that goal. And I think we can agree on the basic premise that people do want peace, prosperity, and privacy. How we get there or why one person or another supports that idea isn't really relevant, I don't think, in the political sphere. Now, do libertarians or the Libertarian Party, do, do they agree with kind of your view on this? They do. I have some dissenting views with the Libertarian Party on a few things. Sure. Um, abortion being one of them and a, and a few other things. But um, they do agree uh, that a, there's a strict boundary between what's personal and what's public. And, and, they, and I agree that, that religion is a very personal thing. Although people who are religious tend to believe things that they think apply to everybody, and that's understandable because that's really a, you know, what religion does is, is explain our, you know, our existence or a certain sure. understanding of that or whatever, you know what I mean? But, uh, but applying that to other people, um, libertarians understand the difference between private and public and want to keep that, that uh, boundary intact. And now what are your opponents kind of views of religion when it comes to this issue? Well, I would argue that Russ Feingold has sort of a civic religion, and that is he believes that government can solve everything and there's some sort of uh, moral or uh, even spiritual uh, good in government. And I mm. completely disagree because government, in essence, is coercion, and it's getting enough people to be able to force your will on the minority. So I think there's something obviously wrong with that. And in terms of Ron Johnson, I understand him to be a Christian, but he uses that, I think, uh, as a you know, he he infuses that in his in his um, in his politics in terms of social policy, and that's why he's against things like allowing homosexuals to be married uh, in a court of law and things like sure. that. He's imposing his religion on people publicly that way. Russ Feingold doesn't have a specific religion in that sense, but his is more of like the worship of the state and of the majority and of democracy, which is a false god as well. 
such a big issue. I wish we had more time to kind of dive into it, but we'll have you back. We'll have you back again next week. Fantastic. Sure. Again, our news partner, Phil Anderson for U.S. Senate. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. And we'll be back with more Talk of the Town right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town, and I am joined now by Heidi Ashenbrenner, and you are the owner and also a certified cupping therapist with Renew Massage Energy and Body Work. Thank yes. you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to learn more about these topics because they just intrigue me. First off, though, I want to start off with why is Renew different from other places people might go? I think it comes down to the therapist that we have there. I've yeah. always been very picky about massage ever since I discovered how much I love it yeah. and how much it helped me. I used to have a debilitating back condition and oh, wow. it got me back to teaching the fitness classes that I love to do. But I've always really liked a certain caliber of massage experience and it's taken me a long time to build a really fantastic team and I have full confidence in each therapist that works at Renew. I love that confidence and that is really nice for somebody who may be coming in and maybe it's their first time or they're dealing with some sort of health condition that, you know, that's a, that's a scary time for somebody that you have that much confidence in your team. I think that says a lot. And Thank what you. other services do you guys offer other than massage? We also offer cupping therapy, which okay. I'd love to talk more about, craniosacral therapy, Reiki, we have some spa packages, we have some salt scrub treatments, so a lot Ooh, of... Nice health um, maintenance types of things, but also some fun pampering, feel good types of services as well. Now, I, I know you mentioned cupping. I wanna talk about this a little bit because if you watch the Rio Olympics at all, I saw, um, I think it was the men's gymnastics team. A lot of guys there had the big spots you could see, the big circles. Mm -hmm. I think swimmers as well. I think Michael Phelps might have yes, had the cupping did. marks quite a bit. And I remember going on my smartphone and Googling, like, why do these you know athletes have circles on them? So let's talk about cupping a little bit more and how mm -hmm. does that work? It's basically, it's a negative pressure. So it, while massage is compression, you're pushing through the restrictions in the tissue. Cupping therapy is the opposite of that where okay. you're pulling the restrictions up and then it also is gonna pull whatever fluids are stuck in that tissue up with it. So blood, lymph, kind of whatever else is stuck in there. Sure. And that's what causes the color and the circles that comes up to the skin. But it's good because it's things that need to get processed by the body so your circulatory and lymph systems can then get rid of it. And then it just, it works through your adhesions and restrictions for your just regular fascial tightness in a much more effective way than massage can. So how does it actually work? You place a cup on the body and it's it's heat, right? Um, there's various types. Okay. So the, the classic Chinese method does involve removing the air with fire. So sure. that's with the glass cup and you have a little fire thing like we, everybody might have seen in the Karate Kid. Sure. They had a little scene like that. But um, they have other types of cups where you don't need the heat. You can just, oh. there's some silicones one you can pop on or some plastic ones that you can use a tool to, to remove the air. Yeah. So does that hurt then? Just like any kind of body work, there's varying levels of intensity. Okay. You can do it more lightly, you can do it super intense. If you've got an injury, it's probably going to be a little bit uncomfortable, but you wanna work within your pain threshold to still accomplish some healing, but not experience too much pain. Just like when you get a massage, I suppose. Exactly. Like different people have different sensitivities and, and exactly. that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, how about other Eastern techniques that you guys use? So everybody who works at Renew has training in Eastern medicine. So we all went to the same school and we learned about Chinese medicine, uh, not as in depth as acupuncturists, but the same sure. philosophy. And we learned about the meridians of the body that the chi travels through every day. And we learn acupressure points. So it's the same type of healing theory as acupuncturists use, but we focus more on the, the points that are helpful for fascial pain and mu muscle restrictions and alleviating that versus systemic issues that acupuncturists will deal with. Do you guys offer spa services as well? We do. Okay. We do. We've got some great couples packages that our clients just love, and we can offer that same package to individuals in our singles massage package. We have some salt scrub treatments that are great just health-wise and so yeah. feel so good to get this the exfoliation on oh, your whole body. And, and the sauna is available for all of those spa packages, which is also just so healing and good for you to do. Do you guys use essential oils at all in your services? We do. Okay. Yes, all of our spa services include essential oils, which um, each has their own health benefit for them, and you can incorporate essential oils into any massage service at Renew. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And quick before we go here, where can people find you or a phone number maybe if they want to set up an appointment? Best way is online sure. at RenewMadison.com. Booking online is, is nice and easy, and they can give us a call at 608-438-5342 as well. 
Perfect. You guys offer so much stuff. There's something certainly there that you're going to love that you can find. I think so. So again, this is Heidi with Renew Massage, Energy and Body Work. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be back with more Talk of the Town here on Wisconsin's 57 right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town, and with me now I have Patty Steinauer, and you are the owner over at Bar 3 here in Madison. Thank you so much for being with us Thanks today. Thanks for inviting me. And so for those who may not be familiar, I know the, the spelling of the name threw me off a little bit, but I like it because that makes it really memorable, I think. Tell us a little bit about what Bar 3 is. Yeah, so Bar 3 is... Um, a 60 minute core workout. Okay. So it combines yoga, Pilates, and we use the ballet bar as a prop. It's oh, really, cool. yeah, it's low impact. And so basically anyone can do it. What a cool combination of, you know, yoga and Pilates that I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And mm -hmm. then the ballet bar. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's really neat. What a cool combination. Yeah. And so as I understand it, bar three is there are some all over. It sounds yeah, like. they're all over the okay. U.S. We even have some outside the country sure. as well. So Very cool. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to open one up here in Madison? Yeah, so I am born and raised in Madison, Wisconsin. Sure. I even went to college here. So oh, awesome. After college, I was like, yeah, go Badgers, exactly. Um, so yeah, after college, I was like, I need to, I need to get out <laughs> a little yeah. bit. So I ended up moving to New York for a good five years. Wow. And I loved it. I love New York, but I... I missed home a little bit. I'm so sure. I was like, what can I do that brings something back that I love about New York and still be in Madison? And that was bar three. It was something oh, I awesome. did um, all the time. I absolutely loved it. Um, and I knew being from Madison and understanding the community, it would be a perfect fit. Absolutely. But, yeah. Kind of going off of that, who in the Madison area, who are the typical clients at Bar 3 that you see? Yeah, um, in all honesty, it's pretty much anyone. We have yeah. those those clients that are, you know, in high school all the way to 70. We have those athletic, really like, you know, really want a killer workout. And yeah. then we also have those clients that um, maybe have never worked out before. We also have those clients that um, maybe have injured themselves. Sure. Um, men, women, women that are pregnant or just wow. trying to get back into shape after having a baby. So Very yeah. diverse, it sounds exactly. like. Exactly. So what makes Bar 3 unique compared to other, I guess, Pilates or maybe yoga classes in the community? Yeah, so just talking about before those, tip, those clients that we have, being able to cater to all yeah. those clients, the reason we are able to is because what we call modifications. So you'll have one client that is doing a plank on the floor that, that is you know an athlete that wants a killer workout. Yeah. And then you also have the client that maybe injured themselves and they're doing plank at the bar because they injured their shoulder and they can't put as much weight on that shoulder, but they're still getting a crazy core workout. Oh, cool. So personalized yeah. to whoever you are exactly. and the needs that you have. Totally. Yep. So I know a big thing for you guys is not only exercise, but nourishing your body and connecting with your body. And that's mm -hmm. a big theme. And so how does Bar yeah. 3 help clients support that healthy lifestyle, you know, not only in the studio, but outside the studio in their everyday lives? Yeah, you took some of the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I love it. So the way that the, we have three components. Um, towards a healthy lifestyle, yeah. and that is fitness, making sure that you stay active every day in your right. life. Um, the other one is nourishment, um, eating whole, healthy, great foods. And then the last one is community, staying connected and giving back to the community. So one of the ways that we give back to the community is we have this canned food drive coming up. Um, so if you come in between November 17th to the 24th and give three cans, uh, you will get a free class card. Oh. Yeah, so it's a great way to get a great workout and then wow. also feel good about giving back. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, who doesn't have three cans of food there you that go. You know, you're not touching for a while? Exactly. You might as well put that to good use and also mm -hmm. get a great workout out of it as well and try something new. Exactly. So if somebody's really interested in this and I think just this is really unique and a really unique concept. How can people get started or find more information or book a class? Yeah, um, you can go on our um, online. You can book there. You can call the studio um, or even stop by. Just stop by and check us out. I mean, we have, even though we have a studio, yeah, we have online workouts that are amazing. Oh, cool. Yeah, so if you have a busy lifestyle, we try to make it easy and convenient for clients to figure out a way to make it make time for it. So. That's so important because 
I'm sure in the fitness world, I mean, there's so many p excuses people come up with not totally. to be active. Yeah. Um, but I know a big one for me is, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time totally. for it. Yeah. And it's nice when you have a program that, you know, you yeah. can't use that excuse yeah. anymore because they're making totally. it pretty accessible to you. Exactly. So that's really important. Yeah, so maybe you can make it in the studio or maybe you do an online workout. You may, you're traveling, so. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Again, this is Patty. She's the owner over at Bar 3. Thank you so much for being with us yeah, today. Thanks, I appreciate it. Appreciate we'll be it. back with more Talk of the Town right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Wisconsin's 57. And with me now, I have Alex Kammer, and now you're the director with Game Hole Con. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And Game Hole Con, for those who may not be familiar, is the largest tabletop gaming convention in the upper Midwest. So I'm super excited to learn more. Just tell me a little bit more about Game Hole Con and what it is. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, again, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, Game Hole Con is a tabletop gaming convention. Okay. Uh, and the first thing to keep in mind is that when people think of gaming, usually you think of video games. Right. That's not what this is. This is uh, tabletop gaming, so that's any kind of game that you could play on a tabletop, such as a board game, a role-playing game, or uh, miniature games. So this includes things, classics like Monopoly and Scrabble, to all the complicated board games that exist out there today, uh, role-playing games like uh, I'm sure most folks have hold of, heard of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, that's there's tons and tons of Dungeons and Dragons at our show and, and spin-off type games. Sure. And miniature games where the people are doing war reenactments with miniatures or um, fantasy miniature games. So it sounds like a wide variety of different things. It is. It's a wide variety of games and a wide variety of players. So we cool. have people that are really real hardcore players that have been playing their whole lives and also uh, families that come with kids that want to try a game for the first time. I know for me, I know I heard you say first Monopoly. I am awful at Monopoly. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. It's it's a worthless game for me. I, not a fan. Not a fan of Monopoly either. Me neither. There, there are so many great board games right now. We're, we live in a time where we're seeing a real renaissance in gaming. Yeah. If you go to any game store now, you wouldn't believe the selection of board games uh -huh. that are out there. So you don't have to play Monopoly anymore. There's so many better games. Scrabble, though. That's my cup of tea. Scrabble's a good game. That's I a, love that, playing Scrabble. Yeah, absolutely. Can't awesome. That. So that's something I could go play if <clears throat> I wanted to go join. Absolutely. We have There's a, a, a games library that's free to attendees that oh, cool. has 2,000 games. You can come and check a game out and play anything. So I know you mentioned the type of people who are going to be going to this event. Mm -hmm. You could be going if you are, you know, a serious player, or it sounds like, you know, families, if you're looking for something to do. Right, right. We have the whole mix, uh, and we, uh, myself, I have small children, sort of the other sure. guys who uh, run the show, so we're very sensitive to that, that if a family wants to come by that they have something to do. We even have a free face painting that's set up oh, cool. all weekend long, so uh, kiddos can have something to do. Uh, free miniature painting, they can get a small miniature and get, uh, get some instruction on how to paint it and they get to take it home, uh, the free games library, all this sort of stuff for, for families, for the, for the casual gamer who wants to you know, check it out, a uh, big dealer hall where you can come and see the newest games and maybe buy a game if you're interested. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so, so a lot of different events going on. Tons and tons. And we have, and then as far as gaming itself, we have over 1,200 individual gaming events that are going on over wow. the weekend. So lots and lots of games of all varieties. Uh, and truly, uh, if you have any interest in tabletop gaming, there's going to be something for you, certainly. So now, if I went, could I go and join in any games? Yes, th yes, there are. We have a lot of on-site sign-ups. Now, okay. we've had over a thousand people have already registered and signed wow. up for games. But we also have probably 40% of our attendants are walk-up. And so we do have big monitors that show what games are available. You can come up and look and pick a spot and go sign up for that game. It'll be at 10 a.m. on Friday or t noon on Saturday or whatever, and you jump into that game. I will tell you that I will not be signing up for Monopoly because, <laughs> like I said, I am no good at that game. Sure, but sure. But maybe Scrabble. Yeah. I don't know. I might not be as good as I think I am, though. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. You know, that you, you, most games are, are are not. You don't uh, play to win anyway. Yeah, you play to yeah. have fun, and that's what that's what uh, Scrabble certainly one of those for me too. I'm not a, far from an expert. <laughs> Absolutely. And let's talk again about some other non-gaming things that are going to be going on at this event. Sure, we're very excited to have an event called True Dungeon this year. And True Dungeon is an amazing experience, and they uh, actually inhabit an entire hall at the Alliant Energy Center. So 25,000 square feet houses this event. Oh. And what it is, it's a uh, dungeon that is set up. Uh, so what you do is, in groups of 10, you go through it, and it's an experience like an escape room. 
but instead of one room, it's seven rooms. So you go from room to room, and they're all dungeon setups, and they're puzzles you solve, and monsters you have to fight, and so on. Not actually physically fight, right. but it's and it's all uh, the costumes and lighting and props, and it's just this amazing experience. Immersive gaming, oh, it's fun. called. So it's really cool, and it's not. It's designed for people that are not. You don't have to have any knowledge of how to play. It's, yeah. not, it's not a complicated game in and of itself. It's just an amazing experience. And we're only the, there's one other show in the country that has this. We're the second one to get it, and we're very excited. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, so that's a big deal for us. What a fun way to go maybe do something with your friends and go try something new. Exactly. You're not going to want to miss this event. It sounds like a lot of fun and something for everybody or somebody in the whole family. So, again, Alex Kammer with Gamehole Con, thank you for being with us oh, today. Thank you. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. And thank you to all of our guests who are with us today. And thank you for watching Talk of the Town. You can find us next time only on Wisconsin's 57.